there is a problem for lime swimming, madam. So uh, uh, our um, IT person is working on it. Yeah, he created link and now he's working on it and he's unable to do it. So I have another link which I'm sharing. Now some message is there. Meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. The message has come. Yeah, now it has come. Let's come. So please uh, share this live streaming link to So we have another link. Uh, sorry for that, but Extremely sorry, people. Um, really, really very sorry. I, I am not uh, very good in this live streaming link. It's, it's complicated. But well, I, I once again um, welcome you all. And I start with uh, this. Uh, as a society, we learn about the world and advances our well-being through science and engineering. And yesterday's day one, we heard that, you know, science and engineering, how uh, the women scientists and their representation in this science and engineering stream is uh, lacking. And, uh, and in that matter, if you look, India is digitally transforming at a very, very rapid pace. But at the same time, demand for technologically competent employee base is growing. And, and as many as 40% of the Indians who graduate in science and technology, engineering and mathematics disciplined are women. But we heard from yesterday, Professor Chandrima Saha or Professor Kiran Majumdar Shah both pointed out that you know, we have a more candidate who are coming out in these stream as a graduate, but ultimately you don't see them as, you know, performing there for a long time. And that is why it, it surprises all that neither the graduates nor the country is gaining much from uh, that. So women constitute merely 14% of the total 2,80,000 scientists, engineer, and technologists in research development institutions in India. This is a recent report uh, published uh, in an economics time. And uh, this is a really, really, you know, very, very uh, less representation. So women represent a minority in the world of science at a mere 30% and only 35% of the STEM students are women. So we have graduates, but we do not have researchers. So what can be done in that case? So we need a dedicated strategy, not only for increasing the representation of women in the talent uh, pipeline for STEM uh, jobs, but also ensuring that, try, uh, that they thrive and incentivizing them to remain there in the job or institutionalizing organizational culture that enable women to advance in this field as, as said by an executive director of UN, UN Women. So one of the strategy is also to conduct these kind of special webinar targeting both men and women. And it is within that context, Institute of Chemical Technology, along with Indian National Young Academy and Global Young Academy, we are very proud to present a day two of third series of international webinar titled Empowering Women in Science, Unleashing Latent Talent. I'm sure we will be able to create a very good discourse around women's participation in various fields of course, STEM through such international discussions, understanding the various opportunities that early career women, girls can grab at right time. Right time is very, very important, both at national level as well as international level. And this will be a strong emphasis of today's dialogue. So we will be running a live session 
questions and answers will be taken at the end of each talk. So if you have any questions, just type your questions in the live chat box. And if you miss anything, don't worry, we will be making these recordings available post this webinar. I request everyone to avoid any personal comments, messages, and only relevant and uh, very specific questions uh, will be taken from the chat box. So the link for the feedback form and other relevant announcement will be available also in the chat box. So once again, I welcome today's speakers and invited guests and the most importantly, the audiences who are watching this program from the different continents. So I, I welcome all. Thank you for your participation. So growing up, you know, I had a very insanitable, uh, insanitable curiosity about the world and my childhood had a very, very beautiful memories. I wanted to know how things work. More than that, I wanted to figure out, you know, about myself. As a child, I have enjoyed my life most. You know, I always caught butterflies and my today daughters also doing the same thing. I caught dragonflies. I tried to make fire using those two stones. I tried to build own cinema theaters using those olden days uh, t uh, film uh, you know and try to burn paper with a glass under hot sun and I, I think you know uh, I, I often messed up with with them to figure out how and why things are working and I didn't knew that then uh, one day I would have a passion for women in STEM science technology engineering and mathematics but now one of my mission for life is to encourage more and more women to fearlessly pursue their interest in this field. And, and that is how, why today's third series of webinar, we have today with us my, my very good friend and colleague. We work together in Indian National Young Academy in Sa Dr. Pooja. So I feel so proud of myself and I therefore would like to first pat on my back that I could bring Dr. Pooja here in this webinar because, you know, I was reading her biodata. And you name any of the top premium competitive award, be it be a national or international, and there is a one person who has grabbed that, and that is Dr. Pooja. So that is why I'm patting on my back. So uh, Dr. Pooja is a senior scientist at CSIR Central Scientific Instruments Organization, Chandigarh. She's a recipient of SERB Women Excellence Award. Young Associate Indian Academy of Science. She's also elected as a member in IAS this very year. Young Scientist Award by Indian Science Congress. Young Scientist Award by International Society for Engineer Energy and Environment. BRICS Young Scientist Award. Indo-US Water Advanced Research Innovation Award. A fellowship by IUSSTF, very, very prestigious fellowship. Canadian Commonwealth Fellowship, Pitcon Travel Award, American Chemical Society. She's a science communicator and most importantly, in India, she has been conducting many, many programs encouraging girls and women to enter into science or STEM. So she's also coordinator for Jigyasa. So thank you so much, Dr. Pooja, for accepting our invitation. And I'm sure from your today's talk on the topic, fellowship opportunities for women scientists in India is going to benefit immensely. So over to you, Dr. Pooja. Thank you, Dr. Shalini, for uh, giving such nice introduction. Uh, and uh, I, I could say you yourself is full of energy, full of inspiration and motivation to others. No, so there is you. We don't require none other than you. Even I got motivated after reading your story. So thank you so much for invitation. Uh, so to start with, without wasting time, I first would like to share my screen. Uh, is it visible, uh, Shalini? Shalini, yeah, yeah, it is visible, visible. Yes, it is very much visible. Uh, but uh, it's very clear. Thank you, Pooja. Okay. So uh, today I thought to choose a topic because uh, uh, related to fellowship opportunities for women scientists in India. Uh, see, we uh, want women representation in field of STEM. So one of major thing which is lacking is the awareness about the opportunities which are available awareness about the challenges also which they face once they enter into the uh, professional career. So awareness is a very important thing. So to 
look into this aspect i decided to come up uh, with the information and certain things which uh, are required which women researcher aspiring women scientist or women who are willing to come into the stem field what are the opportunities available for them to explore and grow in this particular field so the outline what i'll be discussing about certain uh, the statistic which shalini already told about uh, uh, what representation of women in stem field uh, the problem very famous uh, tagline is leaky pipeline so some of viewers who doesn't know about this leaky pipeline concept i would uh, discuss something about it uh, what is the role of role models in stem field to attract more females for more uh, girls in the field of stem and what are the opportunities for this girl student in school level and in uh, graduation post graduation level uh, a little bit i'll be also covering on international opportunities so uh, besides that there are uh, these are the specific opportunities which i'll be discussing which are there for the girls besides that there are a whole lot of opportunities which are available for uh, like anyone so one can explore all those opportunities also uh, so going by the first thing you know like in india whenever we have a result of uh, uh, i am talking mainly in indian context when we have result of 10th exam or 12th board exam the newspaper they are flooded with the news that girls outshines boys so we know that girls are performing well at that stage but what happens if we see in terms of the representation for past 25 years only 25 to 30% phd students are female so even at the research level bsc level msc level doctorate level there is a good representation of the girls in the field of science but the problem lies is the translation of this manpower skilled manpower to professional career so that is the major challenge is how we can convert this skilled manpower into a professional women so that we can have their viewpoint we can have their uh, ideas inputs for the benefit of the society uh, in a uh, holistic way and if we see uh, in terms of technical institution uh, even professor ashtosh sharma highlighted this we have only 10% representation by the girl student girl child so you see the participation in the engineering institution of the girls is very low so according to uh, another report by national task force or women in science women constitute only 15% of indian r and d workforce and this globally this average is around 34 Uh, 30%. If we talk about the prestigious platform like uh, Bhatna Shanti Saru Bhatna Nagar Prize, which is one of the uh, prestigious uh, platform in India, out of 500 participants, only 16 have been women. So, and the proportion of the women starting from the school where they enroll, where their enrollment is around 47%, it goes below to 8% in technical field and 15% in research. So we call this as a leaky pipeline. why leaky pipeline because the we starting with with very good number very very good uh, enrollment of the girls in the school stage and we see their good performance in terms of the exams uh, outcome or otherwise but when we go to the low uh, ug technical institution level or the research level their representation is only 8% and 15% so in between there are these are leakage which are known as leaky pipeline uh, that site is known as leaky pipeline so what are those leakages these could be a some societal uh, social issues which some family issues or some other kind of issues so if we broadly classify them they are uh, four major things is uh, one of them is a double burden syndrome like for a female in india the first image comes as a, a very good mother a very good wife so that is the responsibility she has to take care so some some of the girls or female they are not uh, comfortable handling the burden of a professional life as well as a uh family life so that is there uh, so in, though the scenario has changed a lot uh, from previous time but still this remains a responsibility for a female faculty or female professional to look after the family as well as a professional career then uh, the stereotypes that uh science is meant for the man so it is not only for specifically science there are certain fields we say these are meant for men not for the girl, uh, female or for the girls like if we talk about mechanical engineering or civil engineering we have very less representation of the girls into those fields so there are certain stereotypes associated with it, it. there are uh, i see there are a lot of question comes on the work life balance how 
girls could balance the work and life parallelly so that none of them get sacrificed uh, at uh, uh, on other her, there are certain issues uh, related with the work culture but it is not in most of the organization certain organization where the environment is not very positive or very, not very encouraging for the girls so they because of these major reasons the drop from so 47% to 15% we see there is a major drop from enrollment to the translation of the skilled manpower into the professional women uh, so what are the intervention which are done by the government of india so intervention are required at different stage so i'll be discussing about all these intervention which have been done and you can get take benefit of this intervention at uh, according to the stage where you are whether you are at school level or bsc msc or phd or after that so one of a uh, very major intervention which is done uh, by indian government or uh, by department of science and technology is vigyan jyoti scheme so vigyan jyoti scheme uh, the purpose of this scheme uh, what is important in stem field is to have role models the role models which can guide you what are the challenges going to come in this field how you can tackle those challenges how one uh, if you have a role model you can follow you can see listen to her journey you can uh, discuss your problem with that uh, uh, your role model and another important thing which is done in this vigyan jyoti program is that the selected girls in uh, from 9 10th and 11th class they are given a training technical training as well as they are uh, there are motivational uh, uh, interaction with the role models they are given opportunity to visit uh, different science institute of the country so that they get a real exposure of this field i myself is also associated with the vigyan jyoti program in chandigarh and i see a very uh, the group which is very active and very active discussion happens in that group and they are given a whole lot of training as well as the students they also get a fellowship in uh, this uh, program the students who the girl student bright student who gets uh, selected they get fellowship and not only that if the student who uh, uh, who are selected in this vigyan jyoti program if they get selected into some underrepresented field or underrepresented institute the department of science and technology looks after the whole fee of that student as well as after the completion of that uh, program say graduation if they want to join some academic institution or some professional institution their salary is also paid for a five years so there is a whole lot of hand holding from school uh, to initial uh, uh, early career so that they remain in that professional career so this is very uh, good intervention uh, which initiated just few years back by uh, dst so the students who are uh, who are like who near to the central institute where the scheme is being implemented they can reach to those centers and uh, get uh, information about this uh, particular scheme of vigyan jyoti and uh, like i told the role models has a role uh, to play for, to motivate girls to come into the field of stem as we all know about professor mary curie which is an internationally renowned scientist uh, known for uh, she got two nobel prize one in field of physics and one in field of chemistry uh, but if i talk specifically in indian context how many of you we can uh, count on finger the role models the, the scientists that name comes in our mind uh, just on fingertips so there is one lack of uh, celebrating our uh, you can say stalwarts who have done a marvelous job in this field by handling all social as well as professional challenges so there is a need to bring uh, to celebrate those stalwarts to in, uh, in, inform about those stalwarts in the school level itself in the textbook itself so that we can get uh, the students our girl child they get inspired from so some of the stalwarts like uh, I, i'm not sure how many of you are aware of her so she is a youngest uh, shanti sarup bhatnagar awardee and she recently received this award which is a very prestigious award in india uh, she is dr neena gupta and uh, she got her uh, award for her marvelous work in the field of mathematics likewise in india we have several other uh, stalwarts which which have uh, international recognition and what is required is how we can put bring this talwar to our girls in the uh, field of stem so that they get motivated from them uh, like professor gagandeep kang professor renu saru professor chandrima saha yesterday also you are 
from Professor Chandima Saha. So uh, they are certain uh, person to look for uh, to how to follow uh, how they have come follow their journey, how they faced uh, overcome different challenges in the field of STEM. So that is what is required for that purpose. Once of the program of the government of India is known as a Jigyasa program. Uh, so this is a program of CSIR under scientific social responsibility. This program is not uh, specifically about for girls, but girls can get benefited from this program. The reason being there are 38 laboratory all spread all over India and these program give an opportunity to the aspiring students, aspiring girls to interact with the scientists directly to work in the laboratory environment to understand science very closely. So if you are having some lab which nearby to your location uh, in, within your city or in district, you can approach to these labs and get uh, connected with the uh, platform so that you can get to know about the field of science and the opportunities associated with it. So this is at school level, but because at school level, what we need is a motivation, direction, uh, we need guidance and awareness. So at school level, the girl students, they can get benefited from these both programs, that is uh, Vigyan Jyoti and CSIR Jigyasa program. Now I will tell about certain opportunities uh, which are available uh, for uh, uh, female researchers in India specifically. Uh, there are several programs and scheme by DST, DBT and uh, other uh, funding agency. So I will look, uh, explain all these, uh, tell about all these programs one by one and I can take questions if you have any doubt in related to that. So DST has a dedicated uh, department, a dedicated division, which is known as Kiran. So Kiran, it looks for the different, uh, uh, this is now Kiran is known as knowledge involvement in research advancement through nurturing. It is specifically looking for the challenges associated with the female scientists and have come up with various program in terms of their capacity building, training, uh, if they are having issues with the mobility, like due to relocation, uh, they have to, their husband or uh, has to move and they are facing uh, issues uh, due to relocation. Uh, they have women scientist scheme, I will discuss all this scheme. And also they are working towards strengthening the infrastructure of human universities so that the women get benefited. And uh, also they have a plan and schemes regarding the entrepreneurship. Uh, to bring more entrepreneur, women uh, entrepreneur into the uh, this particular field. So first program uh, which is done under uh, which is there under Kiran is Women Scientist Scheme. This is uh, under further categorized in three schemes: was A, was B, and was C. So first of all, this uh, scheme is mainly for those female uh, student or female researchers who had a career break due to any particular reason due to family reason, due to relocation or any other reason, and they want to come back into the mainstream and, and work in the uh, R&D area. So this, these are different platform available for them. In both A field, one get the opportunity to do research in basic and applied sciences, while in the WOS B scheme, uh, the uh, female who wants to work, who wants to uh, come up with the SNT intervention for societal benefit, mainly for the benefit of the uh, poor people, for the farmers, or for the uh, women itself, uh, they can come under this uh, WOSB scheme. WOSC is a, a totally uh, independent scheme. It, it, this scheme it provides training in a field of IPR, intellectual property, right? So with this training, one can enter into this field of patent analysis and also can uh, come up their own independent firm. So if you see in terms of eligibility, the major criteria for this scheme, the reason behind introducing this scheme is to bring back those uh, workforce which left same due to family reason or some other reason. So this is a uh, opportunity for them to enter back into the R&D field by taking uh, benefit of all, any of these three schemes. So in terms of age criteria for WOS and WOS B, the minimum age is 27 years, while maximum age is 57 years. For if you want more detail about all this scheme, you can go through DST website where you have given all the information about the basic qualification, like an um, MSc student or BTEC or PhD student. Um, it means if you had a career break after uh, uh, undergraduation, post-graduation or doc doctorate, you can come back into the mainstream by taking benefit of all uh, three different schemes uh, by DST. 
So there is um, one very good scheme by Department of Science and Technology is known as the Curie scheme. So Curie scheme, it uh, it established, it helps women university to establish R&D infrastructure so as to come uh, develop the human resource, uh, women uh, specifically, as well as to give an environment which is of international level. So in this particular scheme, they have uh, provide infrastructure to various women universities, some of them listed here. And as a new initiative, uh, the institute, the UN universities, which are get, which got benefited of Curie scheme, so they are allowing the networking opportunities with the Curie beneficiary. It means one can take benefit of the facility established in one institute. So a complete networking opportunities there. And now this scheme is also being extended for the uh, women uh, post-graduate college. So this is very uh, dedicated uh, scheme to uh, uplift the women universities. So as a result, they as an outcome, as a first phase of the scheme, they have found that there is an enhancement in the enrollment of the students. And the students, they because there is infrastructure enhancement, they got the opportunity uh, to, uh, to really uh, realize to have exposure in the field, in this particular field. And the, the, uh, the output is seen in terms of qualifying very competitive national exam in Indian context. The another scheme is uh, of uh, uh, is BF, that is again from DST is a mobility scheme. So this scheme is uh, for to address the relocation issue. Uh, in case if a woman or uh, is in a regular position and they, uh, his husband he got uh, moved to another place. So due to relocation, if the uh, if one researcher is failing some professional challenges, uh, professional and family balance. So this scheme is introduced for uh, employed as well as you know, non-employed women. So this scheme aims to provide an opportunity to women scientists who are facing difficulty due to relocation as what is given in this scheme, the, this scheme is given opportunity to relocate to a new place, a new institute for a period of five years. So in that one gets also a contractual research award it means they also get a research funding so that they can work in that new institute independently uh, for a term of five years. And during that time, they can also explore other alternative job option. Uh, so who is eligible? Uh, only uh, both employed, regular, as well as unemployed uh, female researcher, female students, uh, they are eligible to apply for this mobility scheme. And uh, there are certain age criteria and uh, distance criteria for one to apply for this particular scheme. Now coming to the international opportunities because international exposure is also very much important. By international exposure, you your mind get broadened and you get to you learn to know how to uh, new things and your vision increases. So in that particular part, there is a, a program by Indo-US Science and Technology Forum where the opportunity is given for the female uh, scientists, engineers, and technology to work to undertake international uh, collaborative research in different institute of the uh, United States. So this scheme, there are two uh, categories and in this scheme, one is internship and another is fellowship. So in internship is mainly for those students who are pursuing PhD and are of uh, age below 32. Uh, fellowship is a, a uh, opportunity for uh, employed or regular employed woman or researcher and the age criteria for this program is uh, below 40. One of my colleagues from my organization has availed this fellowship, uh, this opportunity. This is a very good opportunity uh, because uh, in, this gives you more exposure uh, in your field and this is specifically targeting women in STEM field. So your competition uh, to other um, uh, gender is not there. You have to compete amongst women and uh, uh, get, get selected into this particular opportunity. So if you are eligible for this platform, go for it. It's uh, only two uh, calls have co uh, come in this particular uh, section. And uh, this is a very well appreciated uh, program by Indo-US uh, Science and Technology Forum. Besides DST, Department of Bio and Technology has also uh, very excellent schemes and uh, opportunities for the women researchers with specific focus on enhancing the participation of women scientists in domain of biotechnology research. 
in uh, that specifically include life sciences, agriculture, veterinary sciences, and medicine. So there are different, if you are a life science student and working in the, these different fields, this is a very good opportunity, uh, which is known as a bio care, that is biotechnology career advancement and reorientation program for women scientists. In this, there are, there are two um, schemes are there. First is known as research grant opportunity. So a research grant opportunity, it is a, 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 it is a platform where one even the employed and unemployed woman can get research funding as a first uh, assignment after taking some uh, particular job or even if you are not employed then also you can go for it this is known as rgo research grant opportunity one can get a research project uh, of period three year to five year and if you are unemployed you get a very good uh, amount of salary like fifty thousand to sixty thousand but if you are employed and you are going for this bio care research grant opportunity you get additional incentive besides your salary and the best part is you get a very good research grant of up to rupees 50 lakhs so you can avail this uh, uh, opportunity once in a, your career uh, the age there is an age limit associated with it so if you are working in the field of biotechnology and uh, allied field you can go for this research opportunity the second research scheme which is known as a career re reorientation fellowship or known as crf so many a times what happens, uh, we want, uh, you may not like a particular area and you want to switch to another area. So to switch to another area, you need certain skills, specialized skills. So under this career reorientation fellowship, so DBT gives skill training, which are essential uh, to enter into new field, the different fields where they give training includes IP management, which is again related with the patent analysis bioinformatics, biopolicy research and translation research. So this is kind of a training which is a period for uh, which is for a period of one year. So one can avail, one can upgrade uh, their skills and one or maybe switch to another uh, totally new domain. And uh, so it mainly covers training, field demonstration and extensive activities, which is really required to, uh, to if you want to uh, go for, go forward in a new field or if you want to upgrade your skills. So this is a very good platform by DBT. Uh, there is one uh, program by L'Oreal India. This is specifically for India. So this program, uh, if you want to pursue, any student want to pursue career in science, so L'Oreal India, they provide a fellowship, very good amount of fellowship to promising but economically disadvantaged young women. And it also cover the college fee as well as any study you want to carry out uh, in the field of science in any college or university in India. Uh, there is a very good program by Adobe in the field of computer science specifically. So if you are a computer science undergraduate or a postgraduate, this is a very excellent uh, international opportunity. So in, that, in this opportunity, one uh, could uh, get a, exposure to international uh, work experience in this field and they uh, they get a mentor from Adobe research and this is an opportunity uh, or you can say it is an also internship opportunity so if you are uh, from this field you can you should explore and you should go for this uh, 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 platform uh, now coming to the awards since uh, you said the woman uh, to keep women in science, there has to be certain incentivization or encouragement. So for to take uh, this thing into mind, to keep the hold the women in the STEM field, there are certain very prestigious award constituted by Indian government. So I will tell a few of them. One of them is Sir Women Excellence Award. Uh, I myself, I have received this award uh, this year. This is a very good uh, in terms of that you not only get this award but you also get a research grant of for three years that is five lakh per annum and you can uh, pursue your in research interest the best part of this research award is that they, there is no foundation that how you want to utilize this award money so according to your need according to your research project requirement you can customize it so that you have full freedom to utilize this money for any area research area where you want to explore uh, maybe even if it is a new research area where you want to explore so this is a very good uh, um, opportunity by sir so main criteria for this uh, particular award is that one has to be a member of uh, any of the uh, national academy of the country or the recipient of the associateship of from indian academy of science 
Likewise, for the women who are working in the field of biosciences, there is a National uh, Women Bioscientist Award. So this award also gives you uh, some grant money, some award money, as well as a recognition. So this is again in two categories. One is senior category and one in young category. So you can go into the guidelines of these awards in detail, but this recognizes the efforts made by the women scientists specifically in the area of biotechnology and has shown the translation of it either like the app in form of some application, some product development or the technology development. Uh, so you are uh, recognized nationally by this uh, National Women Bioscientist Award. Uh, after a, a certain after a, a MSc or after PhD, if you may feel like that you want to have more research exposure, if you want to have more research experience. So postdoc is a very good platform. So there are different opportunities available at uh, DST, SARB and UGC level. So I'll just quickly go through them. If you want any detail, you can scroll to uh, their website or you can write to me. So this is a, a program by UGC where they give an opportunity of postdoc specifically for the women, the women who are unemployed and holding PhD degree in their respective subject area, they can go for it and excel into their particular field and get, get more exposure in this uh, their research area by availing this postdoc opportunity. Uh, the duration of this uh, uh, postdoc is of uh, five years and they have 100 uh, such uh, position available per year. Likewise, there is a SERB uh, NPDF, which is specifically not for girls. So those uh, uh, were the opportunities that which I discussed earlier were mainly for the female scientists or female researchers, but there are other platform which you can explore, uh, mainly if you want to go for PDF, NPDF is a very good uh, platform you can explore. And if we uh, tell about certain very good role models in our country who have done really good. So Tamil Nadu has done really very good in terms of different policies and programs related with the women scientists. They have very uh, uh, specific gender cell who look into the entrepreneur development and uh, training of the female researchers so that, uh, and also the upliftment of the women and to motivate uh, the women who have done excellent in their field. They have lifetime achievement award and the, to encourage young, young women, they have young women scientists award. So this is a very successful model and they could uh, enhance the participation of the uh, female researchers in this field because they are starting from the uh, skill training to the awareness uh, to entrepreneurship and uh, also uh, in terms of you see in entrepreneurship there are program which specifically motivate girls scientists to look go for the entrepreneurship and the focus is towards entrepreneurship and self-employment so that the girl scientists or female scientists they become job generator rather than job seekers so under this there are uh, three specific uh, schemes which are there by uh, uh, indian government that is science and technology entrepreneurship park technology business incubator innovation and entrepreneurship development cell so these parks or incubators they uh, uh, they help women to come up with their idea to uh, mature their idea, all kind of mentorship is provided in this incubator so that they become uh, job generator rather than job seekers. So you, you can see there are different domain which this water, uh, this woman technology park cover, whether it is agriculture or health or sanitation or textile, energy, aquaculture, you name. So uh, most of the domains these women technology parks cover and they are windows to access information training for appropriate technologies which can lead to skill as well as the uh, socially relevant product. So it, this is a very good opportunity, specifically if you are uh, working in the field of biotechnology, there are uh, uh, Asia's first Golden Jubilee Biotech Park, which is there in Tamil Nadu, which provide infrastructure as well as training in the four major field of biotechnology that is agriculture food medical and environment where you can uh, set up your idea you can uh, uh, take your idea from concept to to the product level you can commercialize it and uh, come up as an entrepreneur so this is a very good opportunity for those female researchers who wants to who are not interested in academia and want to come in as a in the field of entrepreneurship and become entrepreneur so besides that, there are some other schemes which I'm not going through, but you, they are 
uh, for everyone. Uh, so you can also explore these opportunities. One of them is uh, teacher associateship for research excellence, which is also known as a tier scheme. Like if you are a teacher in any college or in a government uh, institution and want to enter in the field of research. So this give you an opportunity uh, to take a flavor of research by with the help of host or mentor institute. There is a award by uh, um, research grant, or you can say by from SERP, that is Early Career Research Award. So you can, uh, if you are, uh, this is given in the first three year of your regular assignment in any uh, institute, you can explore for this Early Career Research is, uh, Award. Uh, there is international fellowship, postdoc fellowship from SERP, that is known as Overseas Postdoc Fellowship. Then Inspire Fellowship, which is also a very prestigious and highly competitive fellowship. Uh, so after PhD, uh, even after MSc, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, very sure, even during the under graduation also, this fellowship is given. So it could cover your BSc, MSc, as well as the PhD. Even after PhD, you can join as a faculty by availing this Inspire Fellowship. Uh, then there's likewise Inspire. Uh, there is a program uh, from SARB again, is a Ramanujam Fellowship. And uh, for school students, uh, for undergraduate students, there is a very very good scheme which is known as Kishore Vigyanik Prosan Yojana, KVPVI. So uh, you should explore this uh, program in undergrad as well as grad level because that way you get a flavor of research in early, early uh, time of your professional life. So these are uh, different schemes from different, uh, KVPVI has uh, different schemes in different fields. So you can enter into this KVPVI program uh, uh, even at school level or undergrad and uh, grad level. Then there are other uh, international fellowship. I'm not going through them. You can uh, look into it. If you want any information, I'll be happy to provide. Besides that, uh, one of the major challenges is the underrepresentation of the women uh, scientists or researchers in different academies of science. So uh, you could explore and uh, to become part of this academy. Uh, one of the academy which me and Shalin is associated with Indian National Young Academy of Science, which is a very good platform to raise your uh, in concern, raise concern related to young scientists. And uh, it is also a platform which is actively involved in promoting science in schools and colleges. Uh, so you can take benefit of this platform. The plus beauty of this platform is there are 50% participation of women, uh, around 50% participation of women in this, uh, in YAS. So uh, the, for this year, there is call open to uh, apply for INIA. So the aspiring researchers who, uh, who are willing to be uh, re, uh, part of a young boys, they can uh, apply for this INIA um, membership. Uh, at the end, I would like to uh, give some take home message in science. Even though, see, we ask for the opportunity, we ask for the fellowship. It is not only if you have the opportunities and fellowship, then only you can do something. For science to make a successful career in science, it is important that you should have passion. You should be ready to do a lot of hard work and perseverance is very much important. Uh, so Shalin is a very good example in front of us. Uh, she, uh, from the slum, she has uh, been come to the field of science and a very successful researcher. So if you really want to enter in the field of STEM, you should be ready with all this thing. And uh, yeah, once you enter in the field of science, one uh, thing is you, uh, even Professor Ashito suggested is to stay away from the people who demoralize you or uh, negative people until unless you have a solution to that negativity. So don't waste your energy uh, in uh, and focus more into the uh, how you can contribute in field of science and field of STEM for the society. The last thing is we require role models. If we have uh, once we into the field, we should be able to guide to other females so that they become, uh, they learn from our lesson, they learn from our challenges. So more women are required in the field, in the leadership role. So once you enter in this field, you, you should uh, try to at least motivate few your female uh, students or uh, colleagues so that they excel, they enter into this field and excel in this particular field. Uh, some other uh, simple learnings I would uh, say, uh, say yes to the opportunity. So 
you have to be very much confident and be you should be ready instead of taking the excuses you should say yes to the challenging opportunities if it is coming in front of you and definitely a support system is required so it is uh, there's nothing bad in building a support system whether it is a support of your friends or it is a support of your family or your colleague so build a support su system around you and if you serve a certain stage don't feel shy if you want some help at particular stage uh, don't feel shy you should be confident uh, if you really require some help you seek help don't uh, uh, step back and uh, one important thing in field of stem is that for the female you should be a good you should communicate you should speak up you should put your views or opinion your point you should not be modest and uh, uh, stay back uh, rather you should put your views and your uh, uh, opinion uh, in the field which is very much important for the science and mainly for the society at large and also always uh, be open for the learning so keep learning new things uh, in this research career. So I will end my presentation uh, by a quote, famous quote by Professor Mary Curie, that be less curious about people and be more curious about ideas. So that way you can survive in the STEM field. Uh, these opportunities, these platform, which I told, they are certain uh, somewhere to help you at certain stage, maybe it is a school level or maybe at college level, but your uh, attitude uh, towards uh, yourself, uh, towards your field, towards your science, your your knowledge is the one which is make you going to survive in this STEM field. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Shalini. Stop sharing. sharing. I yes. Wow, wow, wow. A big applause to you. I'm so impressed with the entire coverage of various fellowships and I feel like I should go back, run and grab all those opportunities. So without wasting time, I just take questions. There are multiple questions and people are watching our program from Niger, uh, Tanzania, Nigeria, Peru, and there are a lot of OWSD members from different countries. So I thank you everyone and let's take the questions. So the first question is from Tanzania, Dr. Pendo, she is asking, Glad to be here and I'm just wondering if there are any fellowships or opportunities for international women scientists to apply in India. Yeah, there is a one program which I am um, quickly I could recall is the TWAS uh, fellowship. So that is a CSIR TWAS program. So you can apply for that particular program if you want to work in any research institute in India. So there is another question from uh, Dr. Aparna Gunjal from Pune and she's asking, do you need to be a member of INSA or uh, NAS for SERB Excellence Award? You spoke about SERB Excellence Award. Yeah, for the SERB Excellence Award, you either have to be a member or uh, not exactly member, you either have to be a recipient of Associateship of Indian Academy of Science or you should be recipient of different medals uh, by different academy like IMSA, uh, uh, NASI, and Indian Academy of Science. And yeah, if you are a member, that's an even greater, you can say, uh, award um, other than the IMSA, these medals. So if you are a fellow of uh, this academy, you definitely could. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Pooja. There is another question from uh, Shilpa Shotriya, and she's asking, um, uh, many of the grants or funds have an age limit below 40 and majority of women starts their actual career after 35 and above. So any there are there any research grants for women who have already crossed their age limit? No, I already told about such schemes like post scheme is there, the maximum age limit is around 53. Likewise, bio care scheme is again, uh, age limit is 50. So kindly go through what I uh, just discussed few minutes back. So you will get to know there are several opportunities available to come back into the mainstream. Wow, fantastic. Uh, Dr. Gauri Palsokar uh, is asking if uh, there are any postdoctoral fellowship, especially for working women. Yeah, so for postdoc, uh, they are uh, postdoc from the UGC. And then there is a SERB and PDF and uh, Kothari uh, fellowship, which are not specifically for the women, but uh, um, anyone can apply for uh, working woman or uh, what, what is the question for the working woman? It means already she is working. Hmm. 
it's okay. working women okay i think uh, for research you have to be full time researcher it's not a kind of a degree that you can do it part time so if you want to enter into research definitely you have to switch from one to another field yeah most programs are there where you can enter into the field of research but yeah it's not a part time thing that you can do postdoc parallelly with your work Yes, thank you so much, Pooja. And I, uh, I, I would. Uh, there are questions, but then because we are running out of the time, and uh, I hope you will not mind that if our audiences contact you on your website, your uh, institute's website, your email is given, and they can directly oh, contact sure. you and address uh, their you questions. You can share my mail ID, and they can write directly to me. I'll yes. be happy to help as much as I can. Wow! Thank you so much. A big applaud once again. Thank you so much, Dr. Pooja, for Thank accepting you, our invitation, and I'm sure from your talk, the the today's participants are going to run and they are going to grab all the opportunities as much as possible. So thank you yes. so much. Yeah, and awareness is important thing. Even I was not aware when I was doing my undergrad or in my schooling time, these different opportunities are available. So awareness is very much important. So now you get to know through this program organized by Shalini. So take benefit of it. Thank you. Oh, I, I feel so proud that India has so many opportunities for women scientists, and thank you so much, Pooja, for sharing all these uh, things. So thank you, and I'm also thankful to all the audiences for their active participation. Keep asking your questions. Keep asking the right questions to our speakers. Thank you. Thank you, and we move ahead. So friends, O W S D. OWSD is the international organization for women scientists from the developing world and the objective of the OWSD is strengthening the role in uh, women's role in the development process and promoting their representation in scientific and technological leadership so we are very very lucky today um, to have professor Jennifer Thompson uh, who is an emeritus professor in the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at the University of uh, Cape Town. Yeah, I'm just uh, sharing the slide. Uh, she is an emeritus professor in the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, she has done her postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard University. She's also associate professor in genetics at the University of the Witwatersrand, visiting scientist at MIT, and she's the winner of L'Oreal UNESCO Prize for Women in Science for Africa in 2004, Vice Chair of ISAA, that is International Service for Acquisition of Agribiotic Applications, President of Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World. And she's also recipient of the International Prize for the Protection of Human Rights by the Academia Dialancy of Italy. So friends, we are very, very lucky to have Professor Thompson and I'm really, really thank you for accepting our invitation and being here today. And Professor Thompson will talk today on how the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World can help women scientists unleash their latent talents. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, my talk follows very well after the last one uh, because, uh, and I'm just going to try and see how I can get my slides up. And there we go. Can everybody wow. see that? Uh, okay. Yes, we see. Um, so the organization for, uh, for women in science for the developing world uh, has a number of uh, opportunities. So I'm going to go through them all. Um, first of all, they're the fellowships for PhDs and for early careers. And then there are the specific awards. And then most importantly are the networking opportunities via our national chapters. And I'm going to talk about some of the work that the Indian national chapter is doing. 
But there at the bottom in red is what everything is all about. It's to change the perceptions of the world out there to what women can do in science. So our PhD fellowships are funded by Sweden since 1998. Unfortunately for India and South Africa and Nigeria and a couple of other countries, we are not scientifically lagging. So we cannot take up PhD fellowships, but we can be hosts to uh, women PhD fellows from the uh, scientifically lagging countries. When I became um, professor, I mean, when I became president, I opened the membership to social scientists, but our PhD fellowships are only for natural scientists. And so far 283 have graduated and 158 are current. Um, that's just to show which ones are. And these are what we cover. Um, and so for those of you from non-Indian countries in the developing world, uh, these are um, something that you can see on our website. And our website is owsd.net. Very, very easy. So please, those of you who want to, go onto that website and see what the fellowships are. Then very importantly are the early career fellowships, because very often when our young women go into the laboratories and take up their first or second careers, they go into a vacuum. And sometimes they even go into a, an environment that's quite hostile because many of them have had opportunities to do PhDs in, in other countries. And maybe they go back and they find even the male, male colleagues are envious of what they've had and they land up doing an awful lot of teaching. I found that with some of my PhDs from other countries who go back and uh, are swamped by the teaching load. And so this award is enables them to um, to get money from, uh, it's funded by the IDRC in Canada and uh, helps them also if they want to collaborate with in industry. They get an equipment grant, they get research activities grants, and then we have workshops to help them strengthen their leaderships and if necessary, um, how to collaborate with, with industry. And, um, oh, this is, uh, sorry, this is, I want to come back to that. That skipped its place. There, this is the um, some of the early career fellows last year meeting in our home is in Trieste, which sounds a little strange for a uh, developing world uh, organization to be based in Italy. But the Italian government has been extremely helpful to us. They're very, very su supportive of women in science. And it is the home of the World Academy of Science. And we fall under the World Academy of Science, which is based in this beautiful place of Trieste. So the early career women are there having um, a workshop on how to run a lab, how to finance the lab, how to run administration. So we give very, very practical uh, experience to these, these women. Uh, then the um, awards, they are um, up at the top there. It's by Oost and Elsevier uh, foundation. You know Elsevier is, the, is a major um, academic publishing organization and their foundation gives these awards to women who are exceptionally um, outstanding in one of the given fields that they choose. And here is one of our winners a couple of years ago. And uh, she got a prize when she went back to Uganda. That's the president of Uganda giving her a prize for getting the prize. So it's uh, it's a very prestigious affair. And just to go back, if I can, uh, oopsie, uh, there I want to. Here is one of the award winners from Bolivia, and her award gave her recognition at home. When she went back home, uh, the president of Bolivia said he wanted to have a meeting with her for a few minutes. He gave her over an hour. And as a result of her winning this prize, he promised an annual special day to celebrate Bolivian women in science. So these awards have a knock-on effect and can really make a woman's career uh, really um, escalate. We give these awards annually at the American Association for the Advancement of Science meetings. Whether these will be able to happen next year, who knows? We don't know. These, these normally happen in February. 
Last year in February, the award was in Seattle. I was there to help the women get there um, because they have to give presentations and I was coaching in them in their presentations. And I left um, Seattle about four days before it wow. And uh, so it, um, it was lucky, but I don't know if, if the outbreak of the coronavirus didn't allow this to happen. Um, now, for the networking and the national chapters, these are the backbone of our organization. But unfortunately, because we are funded for projects, we don't actually have funding for the national chapters. So we encourage countries who want to, the women in, who are members in a country to link up with another organization uh, who can help them. So for instance, so, sorry, just to, to go back to, to this, um, the national chapters, for instance, the South African national chapter is linked to the Academy of Science and the uh, Kenyan uh, Academy national chapter is linked with the um, International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology. So if you link with another organization, it does help to get um, more activity. Here is the uh, Indian National Chapter, which as you can see there was founded in 2006. These are some of the activities. Networking is a high priority in all of our chapters. Participation in national and international conferences, workshops and lectures where women scientists can showcase their work. And currently there are 282 active members of the Indian National um, And earlier on this year, very recently on the 19th of June, uh, the national chapter in India together with CSIR and NEERI, which I forget get what it stands for, but I think it's going to come up just now, had a webinar on dealing with the new normal, how science has been and will remain challenged and changed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and uh, last, in 2018, our national chapter, I mean, our executive board um, was hosted by the national chapter. We met in New Delhi. And there we are in uh, New Delhi meeting for our annual meeting. And then uh, Atia Kapli is the vice president. You see what we have is a president of OST and then we have our four regions, each has a vice president and a steering committee member. So, oh, there it is. I knew that Neri would be um, um, spelt out because Atia is the senior principal scientist in the environmental gen genomics division of Neri, which is the National Environmental Engineering Research Inst Institute in Nagpur. So uh, she, has been talking about how India has been dealing with the pandemic. So early on, um, we heard that the Indian government went into lockdown uh, to contain the spread. Of course, the downside of that is the economic crunch, but the Indian government oh, no. set from shelter homes and um, Neary, some of them, uh, some of the staff worked from home, some of them lived on campus and they could go on working in their office. Atia's job, for instance, is to provide solutions for environmental problems. And during the lockdown, she couldn't visit the sites for remediation, but after lockdown, she and her team will be monitoring and suggesting treatments for wastewater that may be carrying the virus. Uh, so these are environmental problems that are facing uh, India in, in, uh, in many other countries, of course. Um, and uh, so her own institute is gearing up for the as a detection center that was uh, earlier on. Now that is up and running, developing more cost-effective diagnostics and detection kits for COVID-19. Um, submitted 
some of these for permission to use and scale up, researching better filters to be used in masks with nanomaterials, and also the mass production of sanitizers and masks for distribution to the police and healthcare personnel at the forefront of, of the response. If you go onto our OST website, you will see that we have a, a special section dealing with how our members, our, our executive board members and our, our members are dealing with the pandemic. And I think you will find some of these stories quite uh, inspiring. They certainly are from India. And um, these are some of the other things that they are doing. So, and here are Neary staffs making masks and distributing to NGOs while, as you notice, they are observing the rules of distancing. So here is another thing from our website, also from an Indian member talking about what she and her lab is doing uh, in the Ministry of Science and Technology in India, a little bit more about that. So even though there's lockdown, there's a lot of activity going on in our national chapters and please do go onto our website and you can find out what's happening. And so in a nutshell, thank you very much. You see all the men's faces. Our aim is to make more of these men's faces, women's faces. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jennifer for your wonderful talk and uh, brief idea on what OWSD is uh, doing. I take some of the questions from the audiences. One of the questions uh, from the audiences is, there are, um, are there any age limits to join some of the fellowships by OWSD? No. In fact, we have just yesterday done a first round screening of the new intake for PhD fellows, and we had people in their 50s. And uh, we, we believe that there shouldn't be a, a cutoff. But on the other hand, as somebody going into a PhD at the age of 50 doesn't have that much long to, to make an influence. So, so we take that into account. But no, we, in fact, when I was a, um, an, an active member of the University of Cape Town, one of the things I dealt with was fellowships and our um, national research grant uh, giving agency in South Africa had these young awards and there was a cutoff of 35 years. And I went to them and I said, you out of your mind. For men, it's fine, but women peak later. So we have to have them available to apply much later. In fact, at least up until 45, women are young in science. So that's, there are no cutoffs. So Dr. Nancy Onjemo Otiano is thanking for your great presentation. Temi Tope Fedipe is also appreciating and they're really, really uh, happy. And there is one question from Dr. Aparna Gunjal who is asking, can we submit articles on women empowerment to OWSD? Absolutely. We are more and more having chat rooms. Uh, we also uh, have recently opened up blogs so there's op massive opportunities for people to, uh, women to, to participate. But there is a preference to members of OST. So why don't you, if you want to get involved, become a member. And there's certainly no age limit on the membership. So go onto our OST website, oast.net, and see how you can become a member. You first have to become a member of OST and then you can become a member of a national chapter. So you first join the OAST because not all countries have national chapters. You have to have a certain number of members, 20 members in a country in order to start a national chapter. And some of our smaller countries have got fewer than 20 members. So they just become member of OAST International. But uh, it's much better to join a, a national chapter once you've joined because then you have the opportunities of the networking. Very, very rightly said, Professor. There is a question from Nancy Onjama Otiono. She's asking, what about the 2020 Early Career Fellowship Awards? Are they announced? 
to my knowledge, they haven't yet. I know we've had the meetings to choose them, but that was only about two weeks ago. So to my knowledge, they haven't yet come out. Temi Chope Fadipe is asking, are Nigerians qualified to apply for the postdoc and PhD fellowships by OWSD? Damn it, damn it, damn it. About two years ago, the Nigerians were dropped off the list of um, uh, scientifically lagging countries. So unfortunately not, but we are so aware of the problem that this is raising that we are consciously fundraising to look specifically at countries like Nigeria and even South Africa, although South Africa has got a lot of, um, of, of support for their own, own uh, 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 country people, country women. But Nigeria is a problem and we really are very aware of it. Wow, thank you so much, Professor uh, Jennifer. It's really, really nice. And I, I can say that from my own experience, I have benefited immensely with OWSD's uh, various you know, fellowships, opportunities. Even OWSD supports women scientists to attend international conferences. So I think everything is mentioned on the website. And uh, since uh, we are running out of time, uh, the audiences can go to the website of OWSD and and there are you know like facility to address your questions and i'm sure you will get the answers uh, for all your questions so i thank you once again professor thompson for being here today with us for an insightful enchanting and exciting journey through your talk and we all look forward to hear you again on yet another such exciting platform so thank you so much for sharing your time and experiences with us Thank you. And I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave because we're about to have our electricity cut off in South Africa. So um, I'm glad I was man able to do that. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. I thank you again, all the audiences for their active participation and engagement in this webinar by asking the questions to our speakers. So we move ahead, uh, ahead and we have our next speaker of the day is Professor Dr. Marcia Barbosa. Professor Marcia. Yeah, she was there. Yeah. Is Professor Marcia here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, possibly her uh, video yes. is off. I welcome Professor Marcia Barbosa. And just before the lockdown, I was with Professor Marcia uh, attending um, a very big gathering of uh, women scientists across different countries and we were in international women in science without borders international conference and it was really really exciting to see such an energetic positive personality and when i saw professor marcia i decided that whether she accept me as her mentor or not a uh, mentee or not i'm going to consider her, uh, her as my mentor and i'm following up her there and uh, that is how uh, I contacted her in spite of her very busy busy schedule she could come here and she accepted so thank you so much professor Marcia I welcome you once again in this um, zoom webinar on women in science um, unleashing latent talent. So Professor Marcia is member of Brazilian Academy of Sciences, the World Academy of Sciences to us. She's a professor at Universidad Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. She's a director of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. She is the winner of very, very prestigious Laurel UNESCO Award for Women in Physical Sciences in 2013. She's also winner of the American Physical Society's Nicholson Medal in 2009. In 2020, she was recognized by UN Women as one of the seven women scientists who have shaped our world. So I, I feel so fortunate to, to have Professor Marcia here today with us.
Can you can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Oh. Yes, yes. I love science. I completely love science. And because I love science today, I'm going to share with you some ideas on how you can use scientific method to show that women should be doing science, not only because it's a woman right, but because science will be better with the woman. To start this, let's use evidence. Which evidence I'm going to show you? Look to this picture. This is a picture of the Solvay Conference, the conference of physicists in 1927. There is something very wrong in this picture. There are most males, there is just one single female, that's Marie Curie, that is in the front line. All old, all white, all former European or a USA country. Oh, that's not diversity. But then you're going to say, Marcia, this is 1927. It's an old picture. Hello, that's the 2011 picture of the same conference. Again, man, again, white, again, kind of oldish. And, and to help you, I'm just putting a circle in the two only women in the room. Two women. There was one in 1927, now we have two. But if you realize there are twice the number of people, then you're going to say, Marcia, that's a physicist. Physicists are horrible people. That's why women are not there. You know, they are not getting to this, this horrible field. And, and this is partially true. Uh, the International Union for Current Life Physics in 2002, we realized we have a problem. We don't have women. So they create a group. This group decided to do this large conference. And in this large conference, we gather teams all over the world, 65 teams, to understand why you have so few women in physics. But we understood two things. The first thing showing this graph is that in the entrance, in the university, physics, physics in the world have only 22, 23% of women. But also we realize that as you go up in the career, this per percentage decreases. So when you became a student, PhD student decrease, and then when you become a researcher, it also decreases. And we start to make movements to change that, starting with the union. And we start to make a lot of movement to have more women inside the International Union for Applied Physics. And today we have at least 30% of research, female researchers in positions in this International Union, including a president, female president. Okay, but if you think that only physics is horrible, I'm showing the UNIS pipeline. This graph shows the percentage of women starting in the undergrad, then when you go to master, and ooh, the decrease when you go to the PhD. So women, even though today in average world are at the university, they do not reach the PhD. They do not reach the academic career, not only in physics, in all fields. So we have a problem, evidence of having a problem. Now I'm going to show you a data from my country, Brazil. We did the following. We analyzed 15 years of the percentage of men and women from the undergrad level to the top of the career, to the Minister of Science and Technology and Minister of Education. And what you found that even though today in Brazil, women are half and half with men at university as undergrad and grad students, as the position becomes more political, more power motivated, women disappear. The women are the blue line and the men are the red line. 
and you see as becomes more power, more networking, the women vanish. But then you're going to say, Marcia, that's because it's academic life. Academic life, a lot of networking. However, this is true, and this is so true that we decided to look at the Brazilian Academy of Science. And that's in the orange is the percentage of women in different fields at the academy. Today, in the academy, women are 16%. However, if you look to engineering, we just have two women in physics three, in astronomy three. We have such a small number of women in the academy. And guess what? Brazilian Academy have a higher percentage of women, 16%, than most academies in the world. And that's a problem, huge problem. But then if you're going to say, no, 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 the women don't reach the academy because of the having kids, that's complicated. And here I'm showing you a graph of three moments, three moments of the life of women. In the red is the percentage in different fields, sorry because the graph is in Portuguese, but see different fields of women at S scientists, young career scientists, as top career scientists, as member of the academy. And you see a decrease as you go from red, that's young scientists, to the academy that's orange. So we have two problems. We have few women in science, but we have few women in the top anyway, that decrease all the way to the top. I, Marcia, but academy is horrible. The private sector is much, much, much better. Therefore, that's a data from McKinsey uh, studies from uh, companies, the 500 bigger companies in the world. And what they show is they show that men in the top, and here going to positions up to the top, are 68%. And the women, they better reach white women 19%. But if you are a black woman, it's 4%. So yes, we have also a problem in the private sector. Problems in the academy, problems in the private sectors of this decrease of women uh, as you go to the top. But Marcia, the rules have been that way and it's working that way. You should not bother that. Women have other things to do than raising up in the career. Uh, there is a study for McKinsey studies that that's a, a company, a consulting company. And what they did is that they took the 500 biggest, largest company in the world, and they analyzed these companies for having more women or less women. And they found that the companies that have more women, more diversity, gain more money. They have more profit when they have more women. And it's not more women as secretaries or working in the desk. Are more women as managers, as CEOs, as members of the council. As you can imagine, that made the private sector start to become very worried about how can we promote women. And there are a number of strategies that actually you can copy from the private sector to the academy in which they found ways to try to motivate more the women to enter. But one of the ways to reach this diversity, to be able to have in the academy or in companies diversity is through equity. But what's inequity? Is it equality? No, equality is, is when you give the same chance to people that are different, but they have the same chance. Equity was, is when we put compensatory measures, when you give a little bit of my, more chance of people that comes from disadvantage. So that's the equity. So how to be able to bring the equity? The first thing you have to do is to do what's something we do in science all the time. We have to be myth hunters. We have to destroy the myth that society generates. Some of those myths are stereotypes that say that scientists uh, are crazy. 
Also, the second myth is that there is no prejudice in the evaluations. That's the second myth. And another myth, women don't reach top levels because they don't have ambition, Marcia. Another one is that women don't care for size. Actually, they say the women don't care for physics or technology. They hate technology. And finally, it's a matter of time. Sit down and relax, Marcia. Things are going to be by themselves. Let's look to each one of those myths that they call them mosquito bites because they are things that bother me like mosquito bites, stereotypes. The first thing, I'm showing you a picture in the talk, a picture that illustrates uh, one article I wrote 20 years ago. I didn't ask them to illustrate it back. But when I wrote about women in science, they took this stereotype picture, cartoon, trying to illustrate the way women are viewed as scientists. You might say, but that's 20 years ago, Marcia. The bottom picture is also a cartoon that illustrates another, another article that was wrote recently after the pandemic started. And you can see the only difference between these two graphs are 20 years of technology, because actually the stove and the washing machine are very good in the second graph. So we still have the stereotypes, and they are very strong. And they start when you're very young kid. That's a kind of draft cartoon of the imaginary of kids have when they are asked to draw a scientist. Actually, I have one student of mine doing a PhD in this topic. And it's amazing that when you ask to the kids, draw a scientist who be a white, male, crazy, and with something that explodes. And, but then if you insist, and you tell us, oh, no, 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 kids, draw, design, draw a female scientist. Then you draw something like that. Again, crazy. Again, little bit uh, out of the average woman. And that is reinforced by movies, TV, everything around us, such as this comedy show called The Big Bang Theory, in which the women scientists are all stereotyped. And that's not only my imagination. There are studies showing that the kids all over the planet have these stereotypes. Marcia, but don't worry, that there is no prejudice. There is a study done with 200 kids, which shows that when kids are five years old, they understand intelligence as an attribute that can be either for men or for women. However, when they are asked at seven years old, they think intelligence is a male thing. Actually, the kids, when they are challenged to do some video games that are for smart people or for hardworking people, the girls are all going to the hard working people video game. What means that we are teaching our girls that they should be hardworking and our boys that they are intelligent. This is so strong that there's this Australian study that shows that parents only stimulates girls to go to hard science or something that they believe is for smart people if they think that girls are genius. For the boys, if they like the field, they parents stimulate them to go to the field. So there is, yes, there is prejudice. But there is also prejudice in the field. They took a CV for a lab worker and they put in the CV the name of John and in the same CV the name of Jennifer. And they distributed for many researchers. When did the researchers evaluate John and Jennifer? The result was that John was much more competent, understand more hierarchy, and they were really to be the mentors of John, but not as much to Jennifer. The same CV. And worse than that, the salary they offered to John was much higher than the salary to offer to Jennifer. For the same CV. Uh, but there is one strong thing 
there is one strong thing is that in addition for us to have this uh, environment that goes, goes against women, we also have a lot of strength. Young girl. Excuse me? Yes. Some please mute your mic. Who is there at the background? All mics are muted. Okay. Please go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So uh, but there's an addition that's even worse. Uh, you know, the environment are evaluating lower the girls. But the girls are looking to the south in a worse way. This is an uh, this is a test performed for a thousand students in the United States for the physics zero class. And in this class, at the end of this class, they ask the students to self-evaluate them, to ask them how much they understood about the topic. This is called self-efficacy test. And you can see from the graph that the girls that at the end of the semester got a maximum grade, they think of themselves as knowing as much as the boys who got B. Yes, all the girls that think they know less than the boy for the same grade. But the study keep on going in the physics too, the Saxon semesters of physics. And as you can see, comparing the two graphs, now, the self-efficacy, how much the girls think they know, go, got even lower. Now, the girl who got A grade thinks that she knows as much as the boy who got C grade. So yes, we have self-prejudice. How can we compete in the world? How can you grow in our career if you think so low about ourselves as well? So we have prejudice. Ah, oh, Marcia, but women don't have ambition. And then there is this study performed by BCG. BCG is a consultant company from Boston. And they realized a study 200,000 people. It's a lot of people. And what they found in this study is that at the beginning of the career at the companies, men and women have more or less the same desire and wishes for the next 10 years where they will be. But after 10 years, men and women have a very different attitude. The men keep up with the ambition, but the women, the ambition just went down, down, and down. Why the ambition went down? And I keep reading because it's very interesting study. And the reason why the ambition went down is not as you are thinking the kids, having kids make the woman, no, no, no. The women, they say the kids, the kids affect the productivity, but they didn't affect their ambition. Ah, uh -uh, I know, the husband. Sometimes the husbands are buggy. No, we're not the husband. The thing that affect the ambition of the woman were the lack of support of the colleagues. Or the nasty things they say when the women say that they desire to go up in the career. Or the interruptions, stealing ideas, the well-known men's interrupting, men explaining. And men thinking that when women are strong and bold, they are crazy. So the colleagues are the ones that put the woman down in their ambition. Uh, women do not care for science, Marcia. They don't go like science. They, they like to do other stuff in their lives. Well, women care for science all over the humanity history. And they care so much that they suffer for caring for, for science. Let me tell you very briefly some of my favorite, favorite stories of women. One is Ipacha from Alexandria. Ipacha was a philosopher, a thinker, a woman that constructed instruments to look to the sky. What happened with Ipacha? It came a very conservative movement to the growth of Christianity. And the priests and archbishops didn't allow women to think. And they think that Ipacha was 
such a bad influence. What they did, they asked to the crowd, the population, to kill, and Ipacha was killed. But her message of love for science, of not giving up for anything, keep on on history. Mehikuhi, woo, Mehikuhi, overpower, two Nobel Prize, woo. However, Mehikuhi had that tough, tough life. She's, she was born in Poland, and in Poland, women could not go to the university. So she moved to France, where she worked while she, her sister was studying. And then when she, her sister became a medical doctor, then her sister supported her to study. Mahiki, he only got a job when her husband died. Before that, she was working for free. And when she became a widow and she fell in love with a colleague, the whole French community, instead of looking to the woman that has, was getting the second Nobel Prize, were gossiping. She has a lover, Ooh. because the, is that the, the thing people look to women? And by the way, she was never elected to the French Academy of Science. That's the amount of suffering the women have to go to survive in science. Liz might admit she would leave it in, in, in Germany during the Second World War. She was working with Otto Hahn in the development of the radio, the radio, the, the element discovery. And what happened? He didn't include her name in the publication because he was afraid of the Nazis because she was Jewish. She left Germany, ran away because she was Jewish. And then she complained because he didn't put her name in the papers. And everybody in the community said, hysterical. Finally, after war, she showed all the letters, the correspondence between of them, showing that she was part of the discovery and we could recognize. But by then, it was too late because he already got a Nobel Prize by himself for the discovery. Amy Nader also living in Germany. When she was uh, trying, attempting to study, they didn't allow women to go to the university in Germany. She has to knock on the doors of professors and say, can I attend your class? Finally, she got a PhD. And Hilbert, the famous mathematician, realized she was a genius and attempt to bring her to give classes in the university where he worked. The whole department got together and they discussed and they discussed. And they didn't want Amy to teach. How are students, male students, going to feel having a class for women? But Hilbert was the first he pursued from the history. He stood up and said, this is not a bathroom. This is not a place where you divide men and women. This is a university. And she was hired with no salary. Later on, she got a salary and she moved when th things got tough because she was Jewish to the United States where she and her career in Princeton. Rosalind Susan Yalom discovered the Radio Moon in Say, together with Benson, a colleague. They were about to get the Nobel Prize, but Benson died. And the, and the Nobel, Nobel Committee thought, woo, she's the hardworking. He was the genius. And they didn't get the prize for her. Later on, she realized she has to have a work career only by herself. And she made other discoveries and got the Nobel Prize. Rosalind Planken was just put aside in the discovery of DNA. We have to tell that. She, and then they claim she was a difficult woman. That's what they claim on women try to be bold and get the recognition they deserve. Heidi Lamar, no, the picture is correct. The great art, actress Heidi Lamar in her free time between a movie and another movie, in her trailer, she had a number of electronic books. She made a number of technological discoveries, including she invented what today we use as Wi-Fi for communication. I'm not even to talk about the three women. We have to 
watch the film, hidden figures, which tell the story about this engineer, this mathematician, and this informatic woman, which changed the shape of the man going to the moon in NASA. I might have, but all this is whole the story is like a book. It's a matter of time. Things are going to change. I'm going to show you a graph of the percentage of female researchers in Brazil over time. The red are the women, the blue are the boys. And as you can see, the percentage cut very little change in 15 years. So no, I'm not going to wait because if I wait, things change too slow for my test. So what can you do now? What can you do to make change? Not sit down and ask for the others to do things for me. We have to do things. Let me show you something that they have, people have done already. That's a percentage of women uh, P with PhD in the United States over time. And you can see that you have this flat curve, then a peak in the war, flat curve, and then you change. You change the percentage. This change has a name. This name is affirmative action. Make action, make policy that drives change. A lot of people don't like affirmative action, but affirmative action, as the graph shows, as the evidence shows, works, makes a change. And we way to design this affirmative action is a true policies. And this again is that group for International Union for Applied Physics in the first conference in, in 2002, we have 250 participants, 65 countries represented. And in each one of those teams, they came back to their countries and they start to fight for policy. And even today, this war keeps on going inside IUPAP. And IUPAP have a gender champion inside the council to guarantee that the policies designed inside the, the union are, are policies that allow for the diversity. After that, we start to organize worldwide in Latin America as the one and in, in particular in Brazil conference to motivate, to design new policies. And even the uh, women in South, South Borders that was before only organized in Africa, you say, well, Brazil at some point or part of Africa, so let's do it in Brazil as well. This beautiful conference that again, it was strained into design policies. One of the policies we were able to design in Brazil was the creation of a number of groups inside the specific societies, for instance, the Brazilian Physical Society. The Brazilian Physical Society uh, start two different fights. One to uh, highlight the work of women uh, in science in Brazil, in particular in physics, and books were written telling the stories of the first woman doing science in Brazil. And the second fight was to include maternity leave in all the fellowships that are funded by the government. And today, this is a law. When a woman have a fellowship, if you have included, embedded in the fellowship, a maternity leave uh, period. Uh, and not to say something that we create this book just by ourselves, I'm going to bring a book that was written in India in which we got inspired to write our book about women in physics. Another thing that's important are prizes. People mentioned they got the L'Oreal Prize. So the L'Oreal Prize was very important for me to stand up and say, now we have the stamp that's the L'Oreal Prize to strengthen my fight to have more women in, in, in science and more women in physics. So that is the, the, the picture that was holding in the airport in Paris when I got the prize, me and my students uh, from Brazil. Another thing that's important is to generate small, don't think that any policy have to be big to be impacted. Any 
girls group that you design is important. And in South of Brazil, we have this girls and science group that have been developing a number of policies that are shaping our universities. One of these policies is to collect nasty sentences said by professors in classrooms. And then we took this nice, it's in Portuguese here, but we take these pictures and you cover the university with that. So people be shamed for saying nasty things in classes. But none of that will work. No policy is possible. This is not embedded in empathy. Empathy. So how you design empathy? The first thing that shocked me is this is a study very recent for this year that shows that looking to students from seven to 18 years old, that the boys they, and girls have the same empathy at seven years old, but something happens to the boys that they go down a little bit, but the girls, they gather more empathy. So we have to be able to teach our boys to get the same empathy as the girls get at 18 years old, because empathy is the environment to make diversity works. And one of the things that you make to design empathy is through classes. And we designed it in my institute, online classes that anybody in the country can attend, sorry, it's in Portuguese, in which you talk about feminism, what means feminism, and what means in the different areas. We also did play. So I have a colleague, we have a play in which you collect nasty sentences that we heard, crazy things that we heard, mashy thing that we heard, and you make it comment. And in each conference, big conference we are together, you do this play. And the people, the very same people that said this nasty words, they see them in a comic way. And that generates empathy because then they realize how wrong was to doing that. Finally, we have to track sexual and moral harassment. And we are doing that in our universities by signing the Hiposhi and collecting data and constructing policies to attack that. Finally, we have to rebuild, to reshape our world based in these four E pillars. Evidence, efficiency that require diversity, equity that having compensatory measures, and all of that embedded in empathy. And if you think that's crazy, too crazy, I'm just challenged that together we can make the change. Thank you very much. Oh, Professor Marcia, I have no words to say what I'm just Stunned to listen to your presentation. Wow, wow, wow. I just can say wow. And uh, there are so many questions and uh, there are a few comments. YZ Nimbai says that enjoying this presentation, Dr. Marcia, you're addressing those tough issues which all women in science can relate to and work on to get better. Monica Sharma says addressing tough question, Marcia, bang on. Very, very good presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I, I come back to another question from Monica Sharma, who is asking, women are given lesser dues in every field. How to cross the hurdles imposed by society in general and STEM in particular? OK. First, we have to be together. You know, together. Not saying, I'm STEM girl. I'm separating from the other ones. No, 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 no. Together. Because as I show you, in other uh, teams, women are the majority at university. So get together. If you are the only girl in the room in math or technology, look for the girls in bio. Look for the girls in humanities. And make the strength. And that strength will make the change. Thank you so much, Marcia. There is one more question from um, 
audience and they are asking that uh, how to make our girls intelligent and from the childhood so that they are ready to face all these harassments uh, uh, in, in their future because the world has not yet changed even after uh, so many years of struggles. First thing, we have to change the way we educate our girls. Stop saying, you are pretty, you are so effort. Stop, start to say, you are bright, go ahead. You know, don't let them suffer quiet and alone. Don't let them, you know, okay, you sit down here, let your brother take this because you are such a good girl. I'm not... When people say, you're so good, Marta, wait for being promoted. One, one time, a professor told me that. I said, I'm not a good girl. I'm a bitch, and I want this job. Okay? Don't be so rough on me because I'm a horrible person. But we have to teach our girls to be strong and get what they desire. Wow, uh, Marcia, there is one more compliment. Dr. Alex Daim says that you are so inspiring, re-energizing Professor Marcia, wonderful. Um, there's one question from the audiences and the audiences are asking that how to face the challenges especially or hurdles created by the men when you have uh, men at the higher positions and they are your bosses. So it's very, very difficult and they discourage. And from your study also, you mentioned that. So how to address that? First, get together. Because usually when you're suffering some kind of moral harassment, or sexual harassment, you think that yourself is the problem. I, I, I'm dressing something wrong, I'm wrong, you think. But then when you talk to another woman, you realize that she feels the same, two women. And then you talk to another one, three women. And then you're going to find some man with empathy. And then you're four people. You have to bind other people. You have to be able to find someone that can listen and talk. Women has been suffering quietly for so long. We cannot do that. And if you're very lucky, you find a woman in power that can help you. Then, then we manage. And then we even can capture this guy, the boss guy, if you make the right strategy. If, if, he, if he feels that there is power in what you're doing, or if he understands, you can see the faces when you do the sketch, the play, with the men realizing that they are masters. Once the founder, one of the founders of the institute, at the end of one of my presentations, he came to me and said, Marcia, I never realized I was such a bastard. And this realization can change. Some of the men, not all, because some die bastards, okay? That ones we have to fight even harder. Wow, you are really, really very encouraging and inspiring, uh, Marcia. There is a, one uh, comment or question from Professor Padma Devrajan. She asked, don't you think your talk must be given in a meeting not only of women in science, but also where we have more men? Usually, I might say, usually I do that when I go to conference in my own field, I do this talk in front of men. Because you know, in physics, if you only talk to the woman, you talk for almost an empty room. So uh, I do a lot between physicists, that's my field, where I have the opportunity, I bring that everywhere, in every opportunity I have. And I hope each one of uh, you also start to talk about that without being afraid of people look to you, to you funny. You understand? You have to bring up, bring up the topic, but bring with evidence. You understand? The yes. numbers. And if you go to the web page, you're going to find a number of studies I did, and you just grab the data. And if, and if you ask me, I can send me my presentation, and you grab the data. Because <laughs> then you smash the dating faces of the people when they say that we are just, you're not me, we have the data, 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 data. 
Thank you, Marcia. We have a few men here in this uh, meeting and um, uh, one audience is asking, how was your journey uh, being at such a high position where, you know, men domination and director position is really, really tough. And uh, from my side, I would like to compliment that I have seen in Brazilian Academy of Sciences when I was in Brazil, I have seen there are so many women and that is all because you brought so much big difference and change. So uh, how was your journey? Was it very tough? I, I must say I have uh, many um, stops that were slightly difficult. I came from a low medium class family, what means that when I entered to the university, I was alone for the thing as well. I was the only woman in the room, in the classrooms most of the time. And I was in a time in Brazil in which we have a dictatorship. So I'm very political motivated. I was always fighting for that. So fighting is in my DNA. And that's why I could uh, survive. And, I, and today I am in a position uh, which allows me to make more change. And instead of being quiet, that's usually what people in a certain high positions do. I, I'm not a quiet, you know, it's still fighting is in my DNA. So I'm trying to find, to create this change and any opportunity to talk about that, I'm using it. Any prize I get for my work in water, I work in, in water, I'm using yeah. for driving this change. Wow, Marcia, you are really, really great inspiration. So when you find the people around you negative or troubling you a lot, uh, are you not getting discouraged and you think that, oh, now leave it, I'm tired of fighting, fighting, fighting? How do you handle it? Actually, as I mentioned, I am a bitch, so I love fighting, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so let's use me this characteristic that I like to pinch people. And I'm pinching, you know, the naughty, the, the people that do bad things for, for diversity. So I'm kind of enjoying the challenge. And so let's keep the good fight. So Professor N.C. Shiva Prakash, we have men here also. He's asking, do you agree that men and women should get together? Sure. You know, diversity means that we have to work together. I didn't mention, but there is a wonderful study that shows that innovation is driven by gathering people for different uh, cultural backgrounds, way we were created, different genetics, different everything. That's what drives innovation. So we need to get men, women, people from Brazil, in the United States, everybody together thinking about solving the world's, uh, the problems of the planet. Not only the white old man from Europe that was in this first picture I showed. We will solve the big challenges you face in many topics, not only the pandemic, but in water, in energy and environment. We are going to solve with diversity. Yes. Uh, N.C. Irfani is asking how one can make teams with women who do not believe in their power. First thing you have to realize that people are moved by their own interest. So you realize something that people want in a department. Sometimes it's uh, uh, they care. Sometimes it's more, uh, more balanced time distribution, some, something that puts people together, something simple. And then you sit down and you start to talk like the men do when you go to a bar or a soccer game that they, they talk about things from the department and they make policy. Start this, start this club in which you are designing something together and then you start to share. And you share, you realize that we have such a many common problems and challenges inside your department. And then you team up. And then you have a group. And that's the network that drives policy change. Wow, very, very true. Uh, we have with us Vice President of OWSD, Bertha Garcia, and she says, excellent, Marcia, your projects area articulate in Peru? Is that a compliment? 
I work, I work in Brazil, in the yes. south of Brazil. Yeah, a lot of audiences are impressed with the presentations and they're asking, is it possible to share your PowerPoint? Program? Yes, I'm going to send you by email. Okay. okay. And then you can share. Yeah, I will share uh, it to all tomorrow by <laughs> link. And uh, thank you so much, Professor Marcia. It was such a wonderful presentation. So energizing, motivating, inspiring. And really, really, I, I don't have words to say anything because uh, the comments from all the audiences says it all. I know that how effectively and your schedule is so busy, but, but you know, it is rightly said that the people you habitually associated with determine as much as 95% of your success or failure in life. And I'm so fortunate and feel lucky that I'm associated with you and and, 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 and all these people today after your talk uh, got so much of inspiration, energy, motivation, and uh, you are so busy, but the busiest people I have known in my life always have time enough and uh, you have so much of love for women in science and uh, really, really you made a big difference. No wonder UN Women has, uh, you know, United Nation has uh, listed you as one of the most inspiring, powerful women who had changed or shaped the world. Congratulations for that. And I'm looking forward to collaborate, listen to you on yet another platform. Thank you so much. Thank you and enjoy the remaining of the day. Thank you, Marcia. Wow, what a fantastic and productive day today. We started with the various national opportunities and then we had Professor Thompson who, who gave an idea on OWSD's various opportunities for developing country women. I know, I know, all of you can't wait anymore. After all, you are all ready to embark on the new and exciting journey, which is full of amusement, success, ambitions and of course a lot of opportunities and you want to go and grab it as early as possible well i now request professor mahanwa to sum up and present a word of thanks for the day today dr shalini thank you it's a great uh, afternoon i can say of course uh, today also not a single man out but uh, today there are two men out so we are the only two people who are in this uh, group but uh, uh, nothing wrong, I think. No, it's, uh, there there it's, are it's, others. Uh, there must be others on YouTube. <laughs> but no, no, in uh, this group, there are names. I see. Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So that, yes. that indicates that we are also interested to listen what exactly happening all around the uh, world. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 I think uh, the things are changing. Even yesterday, I mentioned that things are changing uh, uh, very drastically. Uh, there is a great participation coming in uh, from women's side also. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, days are there where the the percentage uh, may cross by 50% uh, to 60%. And it may. Can I can I interfere? Pandit sir is also listening to this. Okay. Uh, yes. Yo, that's, yeah, he, he, he um, listens to all our programs regularly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no okay, problem. so y'all are, your yeah. are is not available. His picture is not there on the screen, but he is listening to me. He's in the yeah. same room that I am sitting. So yeah, we yeah, have so a nice. powerful man listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he takes care of the rest <laughs> of the whole group. <laughs> no, this Good. program is uh, program is uh, his brainchild. You know, yeah. uh, I in, in fact we uh, decided to have only one, but then. Uh, uh, after looking at the success of first program, he said, why not we have a few more programs? And that's how Professor Padma Devarajan and uh, Professor Ibi Pandit, they motivated both of us, myself and Salin, and we uh, uh, plan to have a series. So I think uh, he... So you just chairman, wanted to make sure that you are not too... There is a third person also listening. Third no, man that, listening. No, 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 <laughs> Professor Padma has mentioned there are a few more. Not only YouTube, YouTube, YouTube they are watching. Yeah, yeah, they were there till now. They have left. Now they are not there, but they were there. Okay. At least four more. No, that that's great. That's <laughs> great. Uh, so that's what uh, I'm saying. I mean, yesterday we were again uh, in the galaxy of the stars, where mixed group was there, male and female. Today, uh, it's only the female stars were there in on the platform. 
um, I mean, uh, both are uh, really great uh, personalities. Professor Jennifer Thompson, who is the president of uh, OWSD. We have uh, we had uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Marcia, who also a director of uh, Brazilian Academy of uh, Sciences. A uh, great uh, ladies and uh, young scientist, charming scientist from India, who is uh, Dr. Pooja Sharma, who is the senior scientist CSR. Who has uh, all of them put put in efforts to get maximum possible information about what opportunities are there for women worldwide, uh, how one can make use of that. I think uh, from this program, many more young ladies definitely can get uh, boosting and they can apply for various programs, various schemes offered by uh, government of India as well as the world forums and uh, can be useful for uh, them. And I hope uh, definitely there will be a Women Science Academy separately in India also. Like uh, the, you, you have uh, these women academies, uh, scientist academies in uh, uh, Brazil or even in United uh, States as well as Cape Town. Fortunately, I had um, attended one program only Women uh, Science Academy in Cape Town itself. I think a few years before. We so do I think have. Uh, we yeah. do already have. <laughs> yeah, so, the, so um, uh, uh, this program, it seems uh, being attended by many people and it's uh, really a uh, great resp uh, response for us to get many more uh, uh, top class speakers and uh, get maximum po um, possible information for our uh, audience. Uh, tomorrow also we have um, uh, two or uh, three more uh, speakers and uh, again uh, out of that, uh, Two are uh, from one is from Egypt, another is from Brazil, and uh, uh, one is from uh, India. So again, we'll have a, a feast tomorrow of getting a great information about what women are doing in the uh, field of science and technology. With this, uh, I hope we can conclude for today and uh, see you tomorrow again at 4:30 at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Thank Professor you. Uh, uh, Thank you. Mahanwar and thank you everyone. Tomorrow we have a very, very exciting session on uh, topics again rotating around the women empowerment in developing country challenges and opportunities uh, given by Dr. Mahana sir. She's a member of Global Young Academy and she has been involved in various international projects that are directly uh, targeting the sustainable development goals and we both work together on various issues. Then we will have our spec second speaker, uh, Dr. Shekhar Mande, uh, who will talk on empowering women in science, who is a director general council of scientific and industrial research. And uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, another very, very exciting and enthusiastic uh, young scientist, Dr. Andrea Di Camargo uh, from Brazil, who will talk on worldwide Alexander von Humboldt network. She she herself is a fellow, and uh, when I last time heard about that lecture, uh, really, really, there are very, very big opportunities in that area, and uh, and tomorrow is going to be very, very exciting session. So please join on our YouTube channel live, and um, we will also share today's uh, slides and presentation onto the link. So once again, I thank you all the audiences speakers and our invited guest, Professor Padma Devrajan, Professor Mahanwar, Professor Pandit, and everyone for joining actively in today's webinar. Thank you so much. And I declare uh, the end of today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sharini, Dr. Sharini. Yes. Can you uh, send me the link of this YouTube uh, recordings? Yeah, it is uh, it is uh, automatically recorded on YouTube. So if you see yesterday's, all the talks have been it's recorded. There. It's already there. Yeah, can you give me the link? The I just send her the link, Shalini. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. I attended yesterday also. Wow. Yeah. So, and planning to attend tomorrow also, of course.
Yes, please join. They are going to be very exciting. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Take yeah. care. Good night to everyone. Thank, Bye -bye. You, Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming, sir. Thank you. My pleasure, Professor yes. Padma. Yes. Please join what us. What is your son tomorrow. doing, by the way? Your son finally. My son is in Isar Bhopal. Second. Oh, great. Good. 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 Bye. Yeah, you wrote a mail long ago. I'm yes. very happy to see that he is in Isar. Hello, Professor Bertha Garcia. Welcome Hello. to India. Virtual welcome to India. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, she, she has attended the program right from beginning. Dr. Aparna is exciting to you in the, in the event. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank you. coming and joining. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night, everyone. We look forward for more collaborative webinars and uh, workshops with OWSD. I have uh, been doing this with the National Academies and Global Young Academy, and which is also partner of uh, International Academic Partnership. I saw OWSD is also a member of IAP. And uh, Global Young Academy is also a member of IAP. And I, I think there is a huge... Um, scope and opportunity to collaborate and uh, together i think with owsd i'm looking forward to organize such kind of webinar exclusively for member of owsd and it will benefit immensely well what do you think Ber berta professor Berta? see i send my my email to dr alix because i uh, decided uh, postulate to use an Stony Brook University. Uh, I am still learning in Peru because I desire uh, uh, articulate with project in Kuman in Kuman Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much for being here. See you tomorrow, everyone. Good night. Have a nice yes. and good night's sleep. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye to everybody.